If football player was a term in the dictionary, it would show a picture of Larry Zonka. The man's style of play is what the very nature of the sport is all about. He was the heart and soul of the 1972 Dolphins, the only undefeated team ever in the Super Bowl era. And I'm telling you, he was a battering ram. So, Marshawn Lynch is a special player, well deserving of his nickname Beast Mode. But Larry Zonka did one thing that I don't think Beast Mode, let alone anyone, will ever do again in the NFL. Larry Zonka is the only player ever to be penalized for knocking a player unconscious while running the ball. In a New York Times article, it said, in a game against the Buffalo Bills in 1970, he knocked out safety John Pitts with a forearm shot that was more like a right cross. The dude loved to run the ball, but it wasn't scoring that motivated him. It was dropping his head and punishing defenders. It was part of the reason why he suffered 10 broken noses throughout his football career. And that face mask probably didn't help. Sometimes he'd be running with nothing but daylight in front of him. And then he would spot a defender on the corner of his eye and run at him instead. Honestly, I wouldn't doubt if he just wanted to fight out there. Watch him throw an elbow into this guy's helmet. He was hard to bring down though. With his plane weight varying around 235 to 250, it usually took multiple defenders to slow him down. Having him run up the gut with that punishing mindset must have been real fun for defenders to deal with. Larry Zonka capped off the Dolphins' second Super Bowl win in 1973 with 145 yards, two touchdowns, and took home the game's MVP. The Vikings linebacker Jeff Simon said after Super Bowl VIII, it's not the collision that gets you. It's what happens after you tackle him. His legs are so strong, he keeps moving. He carries you. He's a movable weight. And he rarely fumbles or drops a pass. He was also an excellent blocker. What's interesting, it's actually an accident that Larry Zonka even became a fullback. Going back to his high school days, because of his size, he played defensive end as a sophomore. In the last game of the year, he was sent in as a substitute on the kickoff return team. And the ball just happened to go to him, so he took off running with it. And this is what Zonka said happened. I ran over two tacklers before I realized what I was doing. I didn't score or save the game, but I got a tremendous feeling carrying the ball. I was thrashing around, trying to run six ways at once. I loved it. I knew then that I wanted to run with the ball. He went on to play as college ball at Syracuse, where they still weren't convinced to put him in the backfield because of his size. After his freshman year being on the defensive side, they gave him a chance at fullback. And three seasons later, he was an All-American and broke multiple school records held by a list of guys that included Ernie Davis and Jim Brown. In 1968, he was drafted in the first round by the Miami Dolphins. You will probably never see another fullback drafted in the first round, which is mostly due to the evolution of the game and the limited use of a fullback as far as carrying the ball. Here's a pretty funny story during his rookie year. So according to the Sports Nation article, when he was a rookie, the veterans of the team forced him to stand up on a chair and he would sing a song while people threw jello at him. And Zonka said, that lasted about two days and then I didn't want to get up on the chair anymore. I told everyone, if you want to put me on the chair, you're going to have to earn it. And that was the end of that. As far as his career goes, Zonka was featured in one of the most successful running back by committee offenses ever. They ran a split end offense with Zonka in the middle. They handed it to either him, Jim Kick, or Mercury Morris. Zonka and Morris were the first teammates ever to each record a thousand yards on the ground in the same season. Not only is Zonka one of the greatest fullbacks of all time, he also has one of the most iconic mustaches ever. Because of this, I gotta show you guys what cheesy 70 commercials were all about. Zonk, if you want a date, get in shape. Shape? I'm solid steel. Uh-uh. Shick shape, Zonk. Shick shape. Get clean, get close, get comfort too. Get your face in Shick shape. Click in Shick Super 2, the only twin blades Teflon coated for incredibly comfortable close shaves. Great shape, Zonk. That's Shick shape. Zonka and his teammates had reached the pinnacle of success in the NFL. With the undefeated season, two Super Bowls in a row, and a 32-2 record over two years. 
In March 1974, Larry Zonka, Jim Kick, and Paul Warfield decided to say goodbye to the NFL and sign contracts to play in the newly created World Football League. So the WFL had quite the nicknames for their teams. The Southern California Sun, the Birmingham Americans, the Florida Blazers, the Hawaiians. But the best one of all might be the one that these guys actually played for. All three of them signed with the team in Memphis. I just gotta give props for the creativity in the team's name, the Memphis Southmen. But get this, the team was originally from Toronto and their team name was the Northmen. When the franchise moved south, the team owner was like, hey, Southmen, it only makes sense. The people of Memphis really didn't like that name, but the owner didn't want to change it. So I guess for the fans, he randomly stuck a grizzly bear on the helmet, even though the official team name was still the Southmen. Yeah, this league fell apart real quick. This league overall was just a weird story. Elvis Presley was involved. They tried to sue the NFL. I mean, it has real potential to be a video. But after the league folded, Zonka and his teammates went back to the NFL. And Zonka played a few years on the Giants before eventually going back to Miami and retiring his Hall of Fame career as a Dolphin. Like I said in the beginning, Zonka is the definition of a football player. His attitude is everything you want and honestly seems rare nowadays. He is willing to do anything to win. And at the end of the day, he understands that no matter how dominant you are, football is still a team game. What makes you most proud of your Hall of Fame career? My teammates. <laughs> I didn't get in here by myself. <laughs> this is my favorite quote ever by Larry Zonka. We are going to score or somebody's gonna have to kill me. 